Hey, it's Chris, Legion Games. Let's talk Cascadia. Now, if you're not familiar with Cascadia, it almost looks like a painting on the front. But don't be fooled. This is... I'm going to put this out at the beginning of the video. This is going to be a top 10 game for me this year. And I can already tell you that I am not going to be alone in this. I can already tell you that at the end of the year, many other places and people will have this on their list as well. Mark it there. Lead Stradamus is putting that out there. It's that good. This was a whim Kickstarter back for me. I'll be honest with you. I was not really enticed by Calico, which is similar but completely different. And so I looked at this and I said, you know what? I'll give it a shot. I think it's good value. It was well-priced, and I backed it. But I'll tell you right now, it's going to be in my top 10, nay, maybe even my top 5 of 2021. And I don't say that because I'm buying into the hype. I say it because I freaking enjoyed myself. Hyperspace Kraken. I was going to start this video with some pun of cascading tiles or, you know, a, a Cascadia, a whatever, you know. But I decided, no, I just want to give it its due diligence. This is from Flat Out Games, and it's flat out fantastic. Let's talk why I'm that positive and high on it. Not high like that. You know what I mean. Although, I'm not. So, this is the basic setup for Cascadia. This is, for example, a two-player setup, and you have several different elements going on here, which I'll run you through. Now, the first thing you have to know, but also probably just put aside, is this very busy-looking rule sheet, and you'll see that there are a whole lot of ways that you are going to be scoring. The rule book breaks it down very, very nicely. So I'm not going to talk about all of them directly here, but I'll run it through as we're going through the actual gameplay. So here you have your tiles that you're going to be taking and having a certain number of depending on the player count. You put them in stacks and you're just drawing to refill here as you pull onto your board during your turn. And then you have the five different types of animals. And the nice thing about this game is that there are multiple options of scoring for each different type of animal. So for those of you already going, oh, Chris, this looks like that it's not gonna have a whole lot of replayability. This is like one of like five, I think, or so different ways of scoring the same animal. So if you're familiar with something like Tiny Towns, where you've got five of different types of uh, buildings, this is the same sort of concept. Concept. And so each of these scores a little bit differently depending on what card is out for that particular animal. If you'll notice, which you probably can't see in this view, but each of these has the letter A in the lower right hand corner, which tells you it's from set A. And they actually recommend in the rule book that you start off with set A. So this is the example startup first game if you're learning how to play. And again, they're relatively intuitive, they're relatively straightforward, and the rule book even breaks down the common examples that you may have questions about, so it does a really good job from that side of things. Now, what do you actually need to know? I mean, the gameplay itself is relatively straightforward. You get one of these little tri-hexes that starts off, and the board itself is relatively, again, self-explanatory, which makes this game really scalable from a player count, but also a skill level in general. Now, if you look at this here, you can see that different animals can go in different areas. And now depending what animal is there depends on what animal you can put down. So you can't put an animal that is not on one of these areas in that area. And you'll see some of these ones that you're gonna be picking up have one, some have three, some even have two. Look at that, I didn't even try and do that, but you have the whole gamut there. And then you'll also notice that they have backgrounds and the backgrounds being the environment and both of these things the animals as well as the backgrounds are going to the scoring sheet that i just showed you at the beginning the first thing is just these animals and how you're scoring these animals all have different ones the trout for example this trout so the salmon here is just if you have contiguous salmon. So it doesn't matter how many, but it also tells you at the bottom, if you have one, it's two, two is five, three, three is eight, four is 12, seven or more is 25. So it scales up in that way. The eagle, <laughs> I'm screwing up all these animals. The hawk cannot be touching another hawk on any of the six sides. The fox gets a point for every other different animal that it touches, including foxes. 
uh, the bear, you want pairs of bears not touching any other bears. And then the elk here is very interesting because it has to be adjacent, again, similar to the salmon, but if you look, they have to be straight adjacent, not a curving pattern. And so that also scales all of these point-wise. And then the gameplay itself is relatively straightforward. Grab a pair, put them on your board. That's basically it. Now, obviously, there's more nuance than that, but let me explain. Some of these hexes have this little arrow at the top of them. If you ever put the animal on that hex that matches there, then you get one of these nature tokens to use as sort of a wild card. And they allow you to do two things, two things that are very important. One, much more so, but the other one can be very helpful. Now, you'll notice that when I talked about it, what you're doing with each of these as I move them over a little bit easier to be seen is on your turn, you are selecting a pair of these. You cannot just choose, okay, I want this elk and this tile or this salmon and the salmon one right here. No, you have to take the pairs that they are lined up next to this nature token though allows you to break that rule and take one here and one here and then after you do so however you do it you are refilling here drawing from said bag and then refilling there rinse and repeat but that's using your nature token the other way your nature token is allowed to be used is it allows you to wipe some of these or any of these tokens that you want now these tokens can also be wiped another way so if for example you had three or more of the same kind you can wipe now if you have four of a kind it automatically wipes three of a kind is player's choice of that turn so that's again just another little nuance that you need to be aware of so you don't have to necessarily use one of these if you don't want to because as i said they are quite advantageous to take the pair as i mess that up out if you cannot get the matching corresponding one. So then all you're doing, say, for example, if we make this person over here the first player, this person the second player, is you just take one and then you have to place it on one of the corresponding icons. And if you can't place it, it's just lost and you have to throw it back in the bag. Then you just rinse and repeat this until all of these tiles that have been selected, depending on the number of the player count, are used up. These will not run out. So then, like I said, it's just rinsing and repeating this until you're out, and then you score at the end based on these five scores. But now this is the tricky part. This is the bottom half of this, and you'll see as well, there's two parts to the bottom half of this scoreboard. That little slash there in each of the habitats. The top triangle is the points for the number of contiguous types of habitat that you have. So if I have, for example, you know, three tiles right here meeting the forest, I would get a three on the top slash of that. But if I have more than my opponent, my op I have three and my opponent only has one, I get an additional two bonus points for having the largest area of th all of the players. And you do that for each and every habitat that you have so it's important to have a diversity but obviously within that diversity it's going to affect what of these animals you can get and you can play now here's the tricky part is you don't have to match these you don't have to you can play them there but it's going to be as you can obviously guess a little bit to your disadvantage to do so but you may also have to if you have a hawk that cannot be placed next to another hawk and you need to make sure they are separate for that example. Now this game may look deceptively simple in what you're doing, but you're going to start to run into pairs very quickly that do not line up easily on your board. So let's say first player, let's say, you know what, I want to get this water. I'm forced to take the elk. I've got the elk. We put another tile out. We've got that. We draw randomly from the bag, we get another falcon. So then it's second player's turn. Well, I've already got two falcons over here, so it's probably a good thing that if I can fill this up. And, you know, this one has three, but this one only has the falcon. So which of these is going to be more advantageous? You know what? This one right now, because I can attach it. We put that there. I grab my falcon. Hawk, I'm completely screwing that up every single time. At least I'm consistent, right? At least I'm not, like, totally making up, like, I'm saying eagle or something crazy like that. Then we put another elk out, and then it just goes back and forth until... 
this goes. Now, I would get a nature token because I filled that up. So this player would get the nature token. Goes back over here. Now, I could do the same thing over here with the fox. You know what? Let's do it. And I don't have a mountain. Mountains over here, but I'm more concerned necessarily about this. And let's put the fox right here because already the fox will be touching something else. And I can put um, <laughs> the hawk on that side. And then, again, put this out. Put this out. And see, this in lies part of the trouble, too, is you'll start to get uh very random from the bag and so you may need to be able to mitigate it with this so that i can get exactly what i want because sometimes this pairing is not ideal by any means because i really don't want another hawk there i really want to get one of these others but i have an elk and a bear well i can put the elk there i can put the bear there um elk salmon salmon so you know what maybe i'm gonna take the bear here um but i'm gonna go and i'm gonna grab the tile let me put the tile right there and, you know, the bear could go on either side. We'll put the bear on this side. And again, just another bear, another fox tile. Um, but this fox tile would not go well here. I mean, it would give me a larger area, but it's not going to be necessary. Now, this might be very helpful, but do I put it over here to get the larger field area? Do I put it over here to get the larger forest area? Um, you know, it'd probably be more advantageous to put it over here right now, but because then I could have the elk be in a row at that same time. Now... What's a salmon doing between a field and a forest? That's a whole nother issue. But then I'd have the hawk. I can put the hawk over here. Again, not touching any other hawks. Again, put another one out. Put another one out. Again, another elk. So you can start to see how this is starting to get a little bit more complicated in terms of what you may be trying to choose. Now, I need another bear over here, but I need to make sure there's no other hawk touching here. Now, we don't have a whole lot of other options. So now this, this is maybe where you want to do this. Maybe, I'll see, but if you want the bear touching the other bear, you're going to see that this is going to break up those. Now, I could get the bear and this if I wanted to use my nature token here. But is it worth it at this point? That's the other side of things. So, you know what? I'm going to say no, it's not worth it yet. Because I'm going to take this. I can do sort of the swamp still. I can still have all the salmon touching potentially if I want to. But I'm going to put the elk over there. And so then, again... Just putting it out. I'm just drawing the same things. And this is the risk in this game is sometimes you end up drawing a lot of the similar things, which you really then have to start to be creative. And I see I even missed the nature token there. And you'll notice that some of these that you draw even have the little arrows. All of all three of the four of these out have the, the yellow arrows that you can get nature tokens from then, too. So you can start to accumulate to start to be able to get them. Now, you've got two elks out. If I get another elk out, I could swap it from that side of things. But right now. Nope, not going to do it. Now, again, is it worth having a larger field and getting the bear? I have a place to put the bear. I don't really have a place to put the falcon. I have a place to put the elk. You know what? The elk is probably going to be better at this point. Um, I don't really want the falcon. I don't really want the fox either. Um, so maybe, maybe this is the time where I use this nature token that I remembered. And I grab the elk. But instead of that, maybe I grab the other bear because then maybe I put the bear here which is just out of camera shot so we'll move this up so you can kind of see what I'm actually doing so then I'm going to then put the elk here again I've got the two elk in a straight line I've got two potential bear spots right here that could be my pair of bears and then again ooh, we're drawing a lot of falconry Hawk, re, I'm, at least I'm consistent, right guys? Anyway, so then this is what you're left with. And then the other person is going, okay, well, I really don't like any of this. Uh, but if I grab the elk, at least here, I can then grab this one, which isn't horrible. And let's see. You know what? I put it right here because if I end up having to draw uh, the hawk again, the hawk will be outside of the other hawk's radius. So that would be tolerable. And there you go. That is a sample gameplay for this. It's not difficult in terms of how it's actually be playing, but there is a lot of thought that you can put into how you are organizing and accumulating this in terms of what you need to be aware of, but sometimes even having to look at what other people have, and there can be some of the hate drafting. But to be honest with you, especially with the use of these nature tokens, hate drafting is not going to be as efficient as working on your own. So if you're worried about it from a take that standpoint of, oh, geez, they're going to try and you know mess me up, these modify this and mitigate this to an extent that makes it um, much more tolerable and really shouldn't be an issue um, at all. So just to be aware. Okay.
And let's tell you my final thoughts. So with Cascadia, again, as the trend has become almost recently, it's not new. It's not taking mechanisms that we have never seen before. You know, I think people always have this impression in their mind when you think of games of the year or things that you just have to play as this exploration into territories unknown, like your Grand Admiral Thrawn venturing into the unknown territories or your Lewis and Clark exploring. No, it doesn't need to be that. You can take things that are well known and you can do them in a better and even nay different way and get a result that you would not otherwise expect and that in a nutshell is Cascadia wrapped up in a very artistically aesthetically pleasing bow but you know me like aesthetics aside Aesthetics don't sell me on the actual game, because as beautiful as games are, I've gotten rid of plenty of fantastically, wonderfully looking games that I've said, nah, this is a cool game to look at. Whoosh. See you later. I'll look at you from afar. This is not leaving my collection, because the first positive that you have to know and I, I'm always a little skeptical when it comes to games like this. When you give me a gamer variant, a solo variant, and then even a family variant, you know, sort of a couple notches below, so, you know, ease of accessibility. If you've heard me in a lot of other videos, or if you haven't, I always worry that games that present themselves as amicable to all or a large plethora of various modes that inevitably one or more of those modes do not get the full attention, the full treatment, the depth that really makes them shine. And you have one that is just clearly superior to the others. This doesn't fall into that fallacy or that trap which honestly again is a pleasant surprise because i expect the opposite i do not expect excellence in all of those i expect there to be a letdown i also did not expect this game to offer such a tactical nuance and such a I want to say more even keeled approach regardless of the player count where you are always given options to help your strategy but also allowing you and even forcing you at the same time to be extremely tactical with the rotating combination of pieces that are often presented to you in the general center for taking it's not who necessarily makes all of the best moves every time but it's looking at the combination of those two elements the tile and the animal and who can have the least misses as well now again i'll put this out there right at the beginning this score sheet is going to give some people ptsd of like seven wonders so if you didn't like that and didn't like having to do the math of each individual element and then total them all up, well, I mean, you're not going to like this either, right? That's not going to change it. But if you can just assign that to somebody else in the group and just know how they all work in the first place, somebody else can just do that. You can assign whoever to do the math. I'm, I'm that person in the group. That is or should not be necessarily a reason to not try this game out to see if you enjoy it. Because each of these individual scoring opportunities are very self-explanatory. There is not a whole lot of nuance. There is not a whole lot of, oh, well, I completely forgot that or I didn't understand that. I mean, it is thoroughly laid out 
in a very concise, very neat package. Unlike the closest thing I can compare this to with the arrangement, and, and follow me for a second with this, is Tiny Towns. The architect that you are in Tiny Towns and many other ilk games where you are coordinating the arrangement of pieces like on a chessboard often becomes tedious and more burdensome and it slowly can drain the sense of enjoyment out of doing so in the first place. That was what Tiny Towns was for me. I enjoy it, but having to constantly refer to, okay, what is this one? And this one needs to be touching these. And I only have this much space to work with. And then how are these going at the end game scoring? And is it going to be, I have less control because other people are grabbing things and, and choosing and I have to do this because they said it became less enjoyable as well as I recognize that it is a fantastically designed game from a mechanistic standpoint. Cascadia for me does all of that without feeling like it is weighing me down as a cement shoe would for a mobster in the 30s being thrown into the ocean. Instead, I feel like I have multiple avenues of exploration at every turn, and then it becomes about trying to figure out the best one. Now, again, obviously on the flip side of things, because you are presented with four choices at first glance, with the ability then to mix and match creates a whole other algorithm of possibilities. This could also be analysis paralysis inducing. And so from that side of things, you may not enjoy this. The other things, whereas tiny towns, again, to use that comparison, when you have all of these different buildings in each of these different types, it is sometimes very hard to remember which one is which, which one has to be close next to, not next to, with the animals in these. They are splayed out in front of you and they are very overhead friendly and the family variant does the same the solo even more so and the family variant even gives you more than one level in which you can scale it to allow those who may not be as familiar or those of a younger age to get used to how to do it before plunging them into the icy depths of the full game because there is also potential as this is a shared community garden esque of tiles to be able to look at someone else's and potentially choose something that you know that they would be more apt to be able to use at the same time it offers you many multiple ways of mitigation so that you are not left as i said earlier in a situation where a miss Rather than a one optimized slightly better than the other, a miss can be the difference between winning and losing. And again, how nuanced and how tight do you want it to be from that side of things? But these pine cones give you the ability to mitigate that. So the game addresses those issues knowing that people are going to already proactively potentially have a problem with them. And bottom line is, I think it's fun. I didn't feel like it was a chore. I mean, it's also relatively thematically incorporated. As much or as little as you care about that thing. You know, bears want their own territory. You know, or they want to be in just sets of two. Salmon, whole stream of salmon going together. Scoring points. Hawks don't want to be near anything else. They want their own freaking territory. And so there better not be anything else touching their tile in one of the scorings. It works. It works. I'm happy I have this game. This is going to be a rare probably five for me. I don't say that lightly. I'm not going to give that out to many games in my collection. This is a game I see staying in my collection, period. Because... Of all of those reasons I mentioned, the flexibility, the adaptability, the it factor. It works. 
and for a whim pickup off of Kickstarter that I wasn't quite sold on to begin with, but thought I'd give it a shot. You're darn tootin' right, I'm happy. So, that's Cascadia. Let me know what you think. Let me know how wrong or right I am. No shortage of that ever. Either way, thanks for watching. Check it out if you're interested. Stay classy. I'll see you around.